Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the macroverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the SOM rule recession indicator and how it can be used to better pinpoint the onset of a recession. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. We do have several different tiers available, including, of course, a free one, so make sure you check it out. Links in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So there's often been a discussion um, you know, throughout various outlets over the last year as to whether we're in a recession or not. And we've covered several different indicators on this channel. And while there are a few indicators, like two consecutive quarters of negative GDP that might have suggested we were in a recession in the early stages of 2022, there still are several indicators that do not yet suggest that the U.S. economy is in a recession, okay? Now, it might feel like a recession to a lot of people uh, if, you know, if you're if you're looking at at the stock market going down, but again, the stock market is not the same thing as the economy, and and the stock market can often lead before the economy goes in the direction uh, that it's going to go. So, what's useful is exploring, of course, as we do on the channel, various indicators that can give us insight into when the onset of a recession occurs. Now, you might wonder, won't they tell us when the recession occurs? Well, they might say that a recession occurs, but they might wait a year to back and then backdate it to when it actually occurred. So suppose you're of the opinion, um, like I generally am, that risk assets like equities bottom during a recession, if you get one, then the problem is if you're waiting for a recession to be declared, by the time it's declared, the bottom could already be in. So imagine we go into a recession, say, in September. Okay, so let's say the, the U.S. economy enters into a recession in September, and let's suppose the market bottoms in November, but you're over here waiting for a recession to be declared, and they might declare it sometime later. Let's say they declare it in, in February, and then they backdate it towards September. So you're probably sitting there thinking, oh, well, I'll just wait for it to be declared, and then when they declare it, they backdate it. So then whatever the new local low was, you probably may, you might not have thought that that was actually the bottom when in fact it could have been. And so we need to constantly look for indicators that give us better insight into when the onset of the recession actually occurs, not just when it's declared months or a year later. Okay, this is an important point. The reason why, and just to segue for a little bit, when you look at, say, treasury yield spreads and the inversion of them, this is the two-year and the 10-year, it typically means a recession is coming right at some point now there's a lot of people that might say things like well you know everyone's been predicting a recession forever and you know eventually they'll be right but the thing is is when when the yield curve is inverted like this and when it when it inverts for the first time it's usually not an indicator that we're in a recession right and if you look every time it inverts we've not really been in a recession when it inverts it's when we come out of it so it doesn't predict that a recession is happening now when it inverts, it's predicting a recession will likely occur when it uninverts, right? At some point, the economy is going to have, you know, it's basically saying the economy is sick, and at some point, we're going to feel the effects of it. Could be six months, could be 12 months, could be 18 months. The average time, I believe, for the S or for the uh, for the uninversion of the of the yield curve, or say maybe the um, the onset of a recession from a sustained inversion of the yield curve, maybe three months or so, is like 17 months, okay? And we've looked at plenty of examples where it takes like 12 or 18 months from the from that first sustained inversion until the actual onset of a recession. So is that useful? It, it Not really, right? It's not really that useful in trying to figure out when the recession starts because you don't know how long we're going to spend down here before it uninverts. So there's this other indicator that I want to talk about in this video. So it's called the SOM, the SOM rule recession indicator and just provide a brief description maybe pause the video here if you want to read the entire description but I'll, I'll cover a little bit of it it's an indicator that was developed by an economist named claudia Sam, and it's based on the idea that changes in the unemployment rate can be used to identify the onset of recession now we've talked about this before right we talked about how the unemployment rate so if we go take a look at the unemployment rate the they're, they're probably not going to declare a recession until the unemployment rate starts to go up in a material way Right, like two consecutive quarters of negative GDP is not enough for them to call a recession if the unemployment rate is still at a secular low, and it is, right? It's still at three and a half percent. But look at where the prior recessions occurred, right? These gray shaded regions. It's when the unemployment rate starts to go up 
in a material fashion. Now, what, what this economist did, Claudia Somm, is she said, okay, well, the rule states that if the three-month moving average, um, if the three-month moving average of the unemployment rate increases by half a percentage point or more above its low from the previous year, so looking at the last 12 months, then it's considered a recession, right? So if the three-month SMA, this, the, the simple moving average, of the unemployment rate increases by half a percent, all right? Now, let's take a look at what that has historically meant before diving in to where we are today, all right? So I suppose we'll start with a financial crisis. Now, let me, let me first say the, the primary y-axis over here is the S&P 500 price. This is the blue line. The, this is the sum rule points. The secondary y-axis, which corresponds to the orange line. This horizontal line going across the page is the half percent is the half percentage point or more. So the, when the unemployment rate increases by that. So we wanted to know, when does the orange line cross the horizontal line? Okay, let's see what happened in the financial crisis. All right, when did it cross? It was just below it in January of 2008, and it crossed in February. So it would have said by February of 2008 that we're in a recession. By February. After only the recession being backdated to December. So... Again, they don't declare a recession the, the minute it starts. They backdate it. So it would have been accurate to within a couple of months, right? The bottom still came later, right? The bottom still came later. Look at the dot-com crash. When did it cross? It, it hit the number in June. The recession started in March. About three months or so, right? About three months. The bottom came later. Look at the 1990s. It crossed the line in October. The bottom also occurred in October. So it basically would have given you within one month or so. You might say, well, wasn't that the exact month? There is a one month lag. Okay, so it actually is a one month lag on, on actually getting the data. Um, but you can go through and look at a lot of these cases. The cross here occurred in October of 81. The recession actually started in July. So again, just a few month lag, a few months lag. The bottom occurred in August of 82. Right. I mean, uh, a good bit later, but it, it did it did tell you when the recession actually started within a couple of months. And and again, there's been times where it, it took a year for the recession to actually be, to be declared and then backdated to that point. Now, what might be more interesting is to zone in here on the on the period of high inflation that we had in the 1970s. OK, so what I want to do is look at these two periods here. We know we had high inflation back then. We're also in a period of high inflation today. When did it cross the the, the 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 benchmark? Right, March of 1970. We would have gotten, we would have received that data in April because there's a lag on the data. Get actually getting it. We would have received that data in April. The bottom would have occurred in May, huh? So you had a month, right? It was a hey, signal flashed. The next month, the market bottomed. Let's go take a look over here. In June of 1974, we were just below it. It crossed the mark in July. You would have received that data a month later because there's a month lag. So you would have received it in August. The bottom of the market occurred in October. So one of the reasons I like this indicator is because when it crosses that, that threshold, that half percent threshold, what it shows you is that the market is likely, first of all, the market's pro or the, the economy, the US economy is likely in a recession. Okay. So that means that. There's really no point in waiting six or 12 months to start thinking about the market bottoming because you, you, know, you wait until the official recession is declared. If you do that, you might miss the mark by six, 12 months because they're likely just going to backdate it, right? They're likely just going to backdate the recession until, you know, to some nebulous time in the past, right? So like imagine, imagine if they were to backdate the recession, let's say they declare a recession in, in say like, I don't know, 10 months and they backdate it eight months then what good does that do you if the bottom occurred five months before they declared it, right? So you, you always want to look at, at some like more leading indicators, indicators that are a bit more insightful in the short term so that you can actually understand, are we in a recession or not? Because if you think we're in a recession at any given point, then you, you want to really start looking for the, or for, the, for the S&P to actually bottom. Now, listen, there's no guarantee we go into a recession, right? There is no guarantee. And if you think there is, then that might not be the best thing as an investor because if you, there's no such thing as a sure thing, right? And with investing, there's no such thing as a sure thing. 
There's no guarantee we go into a recession. I would say that it's more likely than not, okay? It's more likely going to happen than not. And one of the reasons is because I would say the single most important factor into whether we go into a recession or not is the Federal Reserve. And the Federal Reserve is, is, I think, usually responsible for pushing us into a recession because of their overly hawkish stance. And you might say, well, why are they so hawkish if, if it seems like indicators are, are not going in the right direction? Well, first of all, there's actually plenty of indicators like the unemployment rate that are still relatively low and at secular lows at three and a half percent. Furthermore, they have high inflation. It's part of their mandate, right? It's their mandate. They need to get inflation back down. So while they normally would have stopped raising interest rates and maybe they would have normally stopped quantitative tightening, right? Rolling off assets from the balance sheet. While in normal times, they may have stopped that long ago. And is why a lot of people would have assumed that that the rate hiking cycle and the you know the, the the QT would have stopped last year. The reason it hasn't is because inflation remains sticky and it still remains high. And so they're being forced again to do things that they normally wouldn't do. When this happens, it's more likely to send us you know it it puts us into a conditional you know an area with conditions that are more likely to send us into a recession. Okay, so then where are we today? Right, you know all this stuff is good. Where are we today, and 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 what does it suggest about about today's economy, and is it giving the signal? Well, right now it's not giving a signal. Okay, you can see well, we have we have data through December, but we already know the unemployment rate. I mean, it, you know, it, it's actually been going. It, it went back down last month, so it went back down to to three and a half percent. So, you know, this here, while it it's still relatively low, you know, we're nowhere near that half percentage point. Nowhere near it. Does that mean? Does that mean you should be lulled into a false sense of security? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Go look at what happened in the '90s. You know, it, it came up to 0.27. It came back down to close to zero, and then within a few months, it just shot up. And during that period, once it shot up quickly, that's when the S&P bottomed, right? When the unemployment rate finally got shot up. And remember, the Federal Reserve—they want to soften labor market conditions. They don't like the fact that the labor market is tight because of wage inflation, right? If if the if the labor market is tight, it's not going to help CPI come down. It's not going to help inflation come down. And and so they arguably are trying to trying to make the unemployment rate go up to, to loosen up the labor market to help curb some of the effects of, of wage inflation and the and the um, effects that would have on the on the overall CPI. So with all this in mind, if you look at where we are today, it's been slowly going up, right? Slowly going up from the negative area, right, to positive, but it's sort of right around that zero mark. We'll have to keep an eye on this. You know, does it see a material move to the, does it go up materially at some point this year? At uh, what point does this occur? And if and when it crosses the zero line, what does that mean? That means we're likely in a recession, okay? Now, the last thing I want to look at is the monthly change. So you take the derivative. I, I think taking looking at the change in the indicator can actually be more insightful sometimes. Not all indicators, and maybe this is one that's not as insightful as others. But just to look at the monthly change, if you look at if you just uh, go observe what happened when this goes from say um, positive to negative, the bottom's usually in here. When it made that change, you can see that actually basically called the bottom. But that's not going to you know that's not going to be the case for every single time. And the problem with this is is that you know this this indicator is 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 very stochastic, right? It doesn't really move in a clear direction all the time, and it can it can more or less oscillate around that zero mark. Like look at what happened during this decade of economic expansion; it was just all over the place, but it was still within a pretty tight range between like negative 0.1 and 0.2. Okay, so it wasn't really giving any clear signal. When you see it go up quickly and then go down quickly, that's typically you know more or less a, a sign of a recession, right? When it's moving up quite quickly. And once it crosses the zero line after a major move to the upside, that's usually an indicator the bottom's already in, right? So like if you go back and look at history, you know, once it crosses back down, the bottom's usually already in, okay? Now, where is it today? Again, it's not making any, any significant moves. It still at this point looks like it did over here where it's just oscillating between a pretty tight range, right? So you're not... You're not actually seeing any clear signs of, of this going up quickly or, or going down quickly. And so I think that's the reason, again, that a lot of economists are hesitant to call a recession 
when the unemployment rate still remains at a secular low and, and you're not really seeing mass layoffs. Now, I know there's some headlines from some major tech companies where you're seeing like 6,000 employees laid off or 10,000 employees laid off. A lot of these companies hired 20 or 30,000 people last year, okay? And additionally, tech jobs, I think only make up like a very small percentage, like you know a couple percent or something of the overall market. And so while tech jobs might be an, a, a, an omen as to what could be coming for the service sector, it has not come for the service sector yet. And until you see that actually occur, I don't think you're going to see a recession declared. Okay. And again, this indicator does not suggest we're in a recession. Once we cross that half percent threshold, then it would suggest we're in a recession. Once that occurs, it's been a pretty, a, a pretty good idea to start thinking about, okay, what's a major bottom potentially on the S&P 500? Where could that be? Um, so that you can start preparing for the next phase of, of economic expansion. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Remember to check out Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You can find a link to that down in the description below. We do have several different tiers. One of them's free. Make sure you check it out. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.